Hello everyone and welcome to another Bible study and episode review in Shady Oak Ministries. I am of course Shady Oak and today we'll be going over episode 12 of season 3 of the TV show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. The episode Games Ponies Play. In this episode we're not only going to be looking ahead as far as well into the biblical themes that were illustrated in the episode but in the way that they were applied actually looking back and seeing that the overarching themes of seasons one and two, that being wisdom and love, and the foundations that they have, and not only what our minds decide to do with our lives, what our actions say, what motivates our heart, and what's directing our spirit, has been the overall themes in introducing up to this point the messages and morals of the TV show as illustrated in the Bible. And in the book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, And as well, continuing into verse 8, if you guys would like to read along, the Apostle Peter, in his second epistle and the last that he would write in his life, reflects on the relationship that we have with God, not necessarily as a pass and move on to the next grade type of exam that we kind of consider lessons to be in this life, where if I'm going to be, you know, passing a class, If I'm going to learn addition so I can then do multiplication, I'm going to continue to do addition just in more advanced and direct ways. I don't forget addition once I've passed it. And that's sadly a misconception that a lot of people have in saying once I've passed something, I never use it again. But you'd see in the TV show, especially in the lives of the main six, that when they learned a lesson, they would either have to repeat it and learn it a harder way, or they would apply it and avoid difficult circumstances and be able to encourage someone who needed to learn similar ones. Like, for example, in the episode The Sonic Rain Boom, Rarity kind of got a little bit too much, a little too big for her britches, or at least too bright for her wings, so to speak. And where in other situations where Rainbow Dash kind of needed to be the one to be comforted, that they were both making simultaneous mistakes, letting fear and pride drive them, ending up swapping places kind of into the each other's frying pan, so to speak. Likewise, when the Mysterious Meredewell episode came up, Rainbow Dash then had to learn the same lesson that Rarity did, and Rarity, in that case, had the opportunity to be the humbler without having to be humbled herself. And in noting this, these lessons are always going to be repeated. And just like in any cyclical lesson, in something that we learn so we can continue to use them, It's a lot like a dance. It's a lot like a choir. You would notice that all of those steps are really just not really all that complicated. You just have to get the motions down as fluidly and as choreographically accurate as possible. Hashtag left shark. (laughs) And basically just take it from the point that you started with and learn that regardless of how your body normally moved, that in the way that you are moving, you know that it looks good, that it's beautiful, and that if I misstep, I just get back into the swing of it again. And no, in the Christian life, we're always going to be making mistakes. No one's going to be perfect this side of heaven. But the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is what Solomon said, is the righteous man falls seven times and stands up again. When a wicked man falls, he falls to calamity. His fall is great. He has nowhere to get up because he doesn't even realize that he's fallen at all. Like the siren said, you didn't know that you fell now that you're now that you're under our spell. And in repeating all of these points, again, the heart revealing true character and the character showing outwardly defining who we are. Peter describes the various things that make up what defines us as Christians, who defines us as part of God's family and what we have ahead for us as far as the hope, the promises, and the somewhat things we should be studying and focusing on and looking forward to seeing as we continue in these dances, as we continue to make these cycles that we would get better and better at it to be able to perform more fluidly and trust that regardless of how weird this feels and how much against the norm this goes, the dance is beautiful. And we're going to follow the steps that even though I've sung this part of the song before, it's not the verse, it's the chorus. The chorus is repeated, but the verses tend to change, just like our circumstances in life may change, but the lessons and the application remain the same. And You guys would notice that when we're going over these episodes, is that the same way in our lives, the main six rarely had to learn little more than how to love people, how to depend on one another, how to recognize that they weren't the sources of all of their problems, and to know that they were by far 
not the solution to their own struggles. And they needed to depend on someone else, someone greater than themselves, something, you know, based off of virtue, something that was entirely founded and going against all of our natures. And that's where we see the foundation of love and the, just beyond this, beyond our standard definition of learning in wisdom. But noting what Peter said in verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So setting these things to the foundation, Paul or Peter is emphasizing the basically the foundations of character matched with a dependence on God. That knowing that just like we need to recognize that we don't have all the answers, that we need to persevere through our stumblings and our struggles and going beyond the norm, growing beyond who we were, but that likewise the person that we are now is continuously needing to change. And if we continue to add to our faith the things that we can't see virtue, that as we believe, so we act, and as we act, so we represent, and as we represent, so we perform, and so as we perform, we endure, and as we endure, we grow, and as we grow, we treat other accordingly. And with all of these things, the foundation is set in love we see the parallels of wisdom and love. Seasons 1 and 2 in a nutshell. Wisdom to love, love to spirit, and anyone who can basically just fake it to behave themselves, it's not anything beyond what you would expect out of just a normal child. If they are near enough to their parents and that risk of punishment is just looming over their heads, they're not going to act out unless they are a glutton for punishment. But if we ourselves can actually form that self-reliance to rely on God and yet have taken away enough from him to know and recognize that he doesn't have to hold my hand or steady the bike as we ride together, that eventually I'll just be able to follow him on my own know-how and that when I know I will stumble at times, he'll always be there to catch me. A simultaneous trust and faith and virtue and wisdom. And in noting that these representatives were seen in Twilight and Cadence, that Twilight knew the right way to do the right thing. Whereas in Cadence, knew what the, well, not only knew, but did the right thing for the right reason. And let these be the foundation of the Christian life. Jesus actually, and noting that he's the most knowledgeable and the source of what it means to live a godly life, since he was God himself, you could turn to the book of Matthew chapter 6. Verses 1 through 4, he's actually given the Sermon on the Mount, a special message addressed to his disciples, and one that I recommend every Christian actually revisit every few months or so, probably even more frequent than that. But in this message that he was giving to his disciples, it was emphasizing what it means to do good and please God. And we all want to do that. We all want to recognize, how can I be well-pleasing to my Father? Because naturally, salvation wasn't something I earned, We talked about that in Ephesians chapter 2, that it was all based off of how good he is that we are of any good at all. The only reason we see how wrong we are is that God's drawn near to us and shown the light in our lives and realized, oh, we are that dark. Well, then the choice is entirely up to us as to whether or not we want to follow him, get closer to him, change, and form a relationship with him. And with these, Jesus said on that topic, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. So, if we're going to be investing 
anything in this life beyond just the temporary and getting glory, making money, and then eventually dying. If our objective in life is just to complete that cycle of, well, I got to get a good job so I can get a good house, so I can get a good wife, so I can have good kids, so that they can good grades, so they can get a good job, so they can get a good house, so they can get a good wife, and just continuing that cycle over and over, it's really kind of pointless. But in saying that the reward in heaven is what actually matters, Jesus calls out, literally calling them hypocrites, and saying they have their reward, but when you do a charitable deed, verse 3, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be seen in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And that is the most important thing, is that where is your reward coming from? When the main six were being introduced to Mrs. Harshwini and having to represent and reflect the nature and character of not only the Crystal Empire, but Twilight directly of the nature of Cadence and kind of putting that pressure on herself, you would notice that Cadence had been no stranger, and I think we have two examples, of rodeos before, to use a horse term. Breathe in, let it go. It's not my problem, we will find a solution. And when trials came up, she was grateful to call on those with character to support her and as well being thankful and patient when things didn't go so well. But in noting that when problems and obstacles and trials arrived in life, with every obstacle, with every challenge, comes the chance of reward. And I mean, the Equestria Games, I mean, if the Olympics was going to be hosted in any of our town, cities, or nations, it's a great honor to us. And in properly representing ourselves and showing that we're of good character we can show responsibility and handle the pressure like rainbow dash was putting on as saying this was just the goal and dream of all of our lives and it was when i was totally crushed and almost traumatizing that crystal pony for life the representation of character was key and that integrity comes from the word integer it's a whole number it's who you are in secret just as much as in the open are your motives beyond more than the immediate? Because twilight, practicing wisdom, knowing what the right thing to do was, the Pharisees knew the entire Old Testament from memory, but we can see from their lives when they actually got face to face with perfection himself and noticed that there were still gaps, they didn't want to change, they wanted to change him, and when they couldn't change him, they just had to get rid of him, literally outright kill him. And in noting that that's not a you know, a moral example that we want to emulate, what was Jesus' motive in everything that he did? He did all things at all times to please the Father. His motive was, I love people and I love my God before anybody. And note, Jesus was God, but took on the nature of human flesh. And when I'm saying nature, I mean the things that we naturally take for granted, oxygen, you know, having to maintain our bodily essence through food, air, and water, having to obey and submit to the law of gravity. And really that's all that Jesus had to do when he became a man, is that by setting the example of the perfect man, his life submitted fully to the Father. Now note, the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and the Son is not the Father, but they are all one and triune in God. You don't understand it? Join the club. He's, his name itself is God, thus bigger and more superior than me. And if my mind can fully wrap itself around the entirety of the creator of the universe, that makes his intellect, his concept to be grasped, at least at a level that's equal to mine. And I'm not that bright. So I'm thankful that there's things I don't fully understand about God or that I can trust him to know that if he has, if he can bench press more than me, I can trust him to catch me if a bridge is falling out. I find safety in those arms. I'm glad he's stronger than me because I'm weak. But noting this, as the result of love and wisdom being the foundation of godliness, that Jesus, in not only living the perfect life ethically, but motivationally as well, we saw that as much as it paid off in the end for the crystal ponies, in that their representation to any sort of stranger, even as you saw Twilight and just giving a stranger a passing by hello and courtesy, that was the first thing that nice that had happened to Miss Harshwini all day. Whereas likewise, the Mustang representative that they got mixed up with, they were integrity. They showed integrity. 
They were kind. They represented the Crystal Empire fairly. And that integrity spoke from itself because when they found out they had gotten the wrong pony, they started panicking because everything that they had done had just gone down the toilet. But with this paralleled in mind, who was the next pony that the Mustang would be talking to? It would be the one that they were trying to impress in the first place, and it was that unbiased opinion that would then be paying off in the end. And note, with all of these interesting little side details and these things that may be setting up a big event in the future but just don't seem significant like we've talked about before, who has despised the day of small things? I can raise my hand and say yes. I don't like it when the small things have to sort of snowball into a something that I could probably fit in the palm of my hand before I'm actually able to make a boulder to take out the advancing Hun armies and move on, right? <laughs> but noting that these tests, this cycle of trials and lessons, these applications of the things that we learn, we should never see a test as a final exam, especially if it seems harder than the ones before it. Because whether you guys know this or not, we never stop learning even when we graduate from school, just like we will never stop growing if we are plugging ourselves back into the source of all growth in our lives. And this is the main idea and the focus I want you guys to understand as the main theme and purpose of this episode that is integrity its own reward. Is that even if they didn't get the Crystal Empire, they know that they represented it to the best of their ability. That just like Rainbow Dash said, Blessing somebody else is almost as good as getting it yourself, almost. That, well, that was Rainbow Dash is just nature talking. Because when, we are, when, when Jesus was perfected, he just said, I'm going to do the right thing for the right reasons. You know why? Because God is love. And that is the one thing that he chose to glorify himself out of more than any of his other attributes. He could have glorified justice. And when we rebelled from him, judge us. And just say, you rejected me, thus I separate you from me forever, letting us get what we deserve. But he didn't choose to do that. He endured with us. He suffered long with us and was kind. He did not envy. He did not parade himself. He did not, what's not puffed up. He go through all of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. It is the attributes and natures of God's heart for you and me. But noting this especially, that as Christians, as followers of Christ, we're not always going to get it right. And for those of you who don't have a relationship with Jesus listening to this study, I apologize if you've had poor examples of Christians in this life, but recognize by following Christ, if we make a mistake, it's our fault, not his. It's not a testament against his character. It's showing that we still have a long way to go. If a child is screaming in a supermarket because he doesn't get candy, Depending on how old that child is, it's a reflection on the parent. But if the parent is, say, you know, leading a 13-year-old and he's acting like a 3-year-old, we kind of think that's really pathetic because if they had been living under a good home, a good roof, a good upbringing, you think they would have learned something by now. I mean, not a lot of people freak out when a 2-year-old screams in line at the store. It's, granted, it's kind of intruding, but we get it. A child doesn't understand more than its own needs, so it's naturally, if it needs something, it's going to yell. That's the first thing it did when it came to this world. It started screaming at everybody. At least that was my approach. I don't know about you. Maybe you were a quiet baby when you learned first to breathe, but that was my introduction. But going back to the concept of integrity, is it enough? And in fact, even going more so into this, in the last chapter of the last book of the Bible, Jesus' promise of heaven and eternal life, literally the epitome of goal, purpose, and center holds just fulfillment of all of God's promises. The best thing that we could have, the thing we were created for, is reflected in this show so well because you and I, ready for this, we were created to be friends of God. You and I were created as God's children so that we could enjoy a relationship for him. That is your purpose. And we see that in this life, we by nature do the one thing that we were built and func made, made to function to do. That we have relationships with each other. We relate to people. We treat people based off of how we feel that 
that should be expressed and based off of examples that we've allowed ourselves to be in our fallen nature we've created violence we've created mistrust dissension bitterness all things that i myself have struggled with and you have too but in noting that in the end the reward is that restored relationship with god not only a perfect heart but the perfect one to enjoy it with that just as the bride is joyfully what waiting for the coming of her bridegroom to sweep her away in the Hebrew weddings and take her to that wedding. So we, as the, the bride of Christ, the church, are waiting for our groom to take us back home with him so that he can not only be our provider, but our comforter as well. Because in Revelation 21.4, my favorite verse in the whole Bible, second only to Revelation 1.17, he said, God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And in that fulfillment, in that just fullness of joy, what is the foundation of what we need to be doing to prepare for that right now? Because, you know, you could take a starving kid from Africa, send him to an all-expense-paid pass to Disneyland, all the food he wants, all the snacks, treats, rides. First in front of every line, I guarantee you he'd get bored in two weeks. But for those of us who have the privilege of coming to these places, is it much more fun to go to Disneyland with a date or to just eat for a table at one by yourself and granted some of us are introverts and just prefer a non-chaotic environment but anyone would admit that just because well just like we were created for relationships there's that longing and emptiness to just be valued recognized and validated in our lives and jesus in the book of revelation chapter 22 and verse 12 says this behold i am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to each one according to his work Now, that's a lot more literal than people give it credit for because a lot of people say, oh, well, if I do all this stuff, then God has all these rewards for me, right? Kind of, but here's the thing. Is integrity its own reward? Then is Jesus a reward of himself? Jesus plus anything is really kind of useless because he is everything. And if that fulfillment of the relationship, that longing for someone, that longing for value, that longing for peace and purpose can be found not in a place but in a person, you find out what paradise really is, that it's not about becoming a more virtuous person but pursuing the virtuous one and as a result through following him, becoming more like him, that like Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you, that he's not only a protector, but a provider, that he not only blesses the young, but rewards the diligent, that he gives salvation to the unworthy, but also then rewards them even more abundantly beyond that for the things that he does in and through themselves. And with the Holy Spirit being the foundation of this topic, that's what these things are meant to point us to, is that if we were to go to heaven right now, It's the most beautiful environment. Streets paved with gold. I guarantee you, when you guys start playing video games, just unlock every cheat code. It's like those who play Pokemon. If you just enter a complete Pokédex and you, you know, hack your way into getting all 300, or (laughs) I don't know how many are out now. What is it? Well, over 719, if you include the two new ones that haven't been released at the time of this release anyway. I don't know in the years to come how many more they'll release. But you get the idea. It takes away the pursuit because, like Donald Trump says, when you know multi-million dollar billionaire actually he said the journey was a lot more fun than the destination but in knowing that you'll always be growing you'll always have a purpose you'll still be learning things in heaven about an infinite god for an infinite amount of time and a god who makes all things new that in six days threw this universe together and declared it very good before sin entered it How much more do you think he's going to have infinity days to work with and constantly making new and greater things for us to discover not only about everything else that he's made, but about himself? And in seeing all of these episodes, we see even little sparks of that same magic that holds us all together. And with the foundation of him as the Holy Spirit, the more that we relate to him and enjoy him, we're literally preparing our hearts for heaven because that's what makes it paradise is that we won't be in the perfect place, but that we'll be finally with that perfect person, the one who loved you so much, he gave everything up so that he could have you again. And if you want that relationship restored, if you want that assurance of knowing, that hope of knowing that one day, 
not only everything evil will be done away with, all the parts that not only you hate about yourself, but that is just have become enmity between you and what you want and know yourself should be, what you want to be, that that relationship will not only begin to be restored, but that you will have, just like a bride has a wedding ring, that promise that one day he's going to make good on this guarantee by literally giving you the entirety of himself to call you, convict you, and lead you into a better way than the life that you once lived. And I implore you guys to recognize it's not something that you lose. It's giving up your life to receive something better. To lose one life is to gain eternal life. And that is a sacrifice worth making. That is an objective and a goal and a victory worth having. More than the Equestria Games, more than the favor of the Crystal Empire, and more so even beyond all of this than anything this world could ever have to offer you. Thank you for your time and listening to this study. I hope it's been a blessing to you. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to support the ministry, leave a like or subscribe for more in the future. It's a great encouragement. But the purpose of this channel is to get the gospel out to our beloved fan base. And if you want to join our ministry, please share this message with anyone you feel would be blessed by it. Thank you for your time and listening to this study. And God bless you.